and he said that they are so bad that you might as well take up smoking. <laughs> yeah, because they're worse they're for worse you than, than smoking. smoking. Hey everybody! Hello! Ben and Ashley, <laughs> we're back again. It's a little cold today. It, yes, it is. It's October. It's getting much chillier up here. Mm -hmm. But we are back to discuss another Medical Medium podcast. So this one is about his third podcast that he just did. And it has got some great information that you guys want to know. Is it heavy? <laughs> <laughs> It's not as as heavy as the first two because that information was like, whoa, fruits going extinct, like what? And then like, what's falling on us from the sky? This though. This is a good one. This is really. This one is all about yeah. those, those things, those chemicals that we smell without even knowing that they're bad for us. Well, that people are actually using on themselves and you can control not using them so this is a good one you can you're in a lot more control yeah this one is about uh, air fresheners scented candles perfumes and colognes we're going to be recapping giving our thoughts our reactions to his podcast yeah and, and adding, all the info adding in some more good tidbits too totally totally so let's Let's get into it. So why are people using these things? Well, people use scented candles, right? To set a nice uh, fragrance to their home. Nice ambiance. Ambiance, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, air fresheners to also keep it smelling fresh. Colognes and perfumes people use because they want to smell good, right? Mm -hmm. But in reality, these things, it's all chemical based. So it's it's like you're breathing in chemicals, which is then affecting your body. It's bringing down your immune system. Yeah, it's, it's affecting your nervous system. Yep. It's maxing out your liver, and of course you're breathing it in. So it's gonna do stuff to your lungs. Yeah, yeah. And 20 years ago, you know, this stuff wasn't going on. People weren't so concerned about how they smell. People weren't so concerned about how their homes smell. <laughs> I think people are more concerned, but the chemical industry has taken advantage since then and really pumped a lot more out, more products out since then. Yeah, I mean, now you can plug air fresheners into your wall socket and you can have dedicated smells in each room and they smell good. Yeah. They're like roses and uh, different flowers. And I mean, they really do a good job selling you on why you need these things. Yeah. And those are like the worst thing for you. Mm hmm Right? Mm hmm Yeah, he says the top two out of those three items, the two worst things are the air fresheners and the scented candles. Yeah. I think he said when you you plug those air plug in air fresheners they like seep into the walls they can go through to other rooms mm -hmm. and he said if you unplug it and you don't do anything to the house you don't paint it for like a hundred years that smell will still be in the walls yeah and then he even takes it further and says if a surgeon is doing surgery on you and is pulling out your appendix well when they pull out your appendix if he had his mask off and could smell then he could actually smell these fragrances In inside your body. your body as he's cutting you open yeah and he said that they are so bad that you might as well take up smoking yeah, because they're worse they're for worse you than, than smoking. smoking. It's crazy. So unplug your air fresheners. It's not doing you any good or anyone that comes to your house. So I found this pretty interesting. What he was saying about how these chemicals get tested before they're released mm -hmm. to us. On the animals. 
Yeah, on the animals. So they test all these chemicals on the animals first. Yeah. They push the animal to the limit. And they, an they, they see what sort of reactions the animal gets from these chemicals. Right. But they're typically only testing one chemical on the animal, right? Yeah, and then the, once they're a go, then they'll mix them up, create this product, or they'll sell the chemicals to other companies who then create products. Mm -hmm. And then those don't really get tested on animals, right? No, there's, they don't test like four chemicals combined with one mm -hmm. another to see how that would react on the animal. They're just testing that one chemical. Yeah. And then who becomes the test subject? The consumer. The person who buys it, us. Yeah. Oh, brother. It's crazy, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I feel bad for all those animals too. I mean, a lot of companies now that are... You know, there's companies that are trying not to, to do that, but the chemical companies still are. It's still, that still happens. Oh, totally, totally. So there's three types of problems with all of this, right? Right. That first problem is where this is affecting our health. Mm -hmm. And then if you're using it, you're exposing others to it. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the second problem. And then the third problem is that poor canary. <laughs> you know, the person who's chronically ill, dealing with all sorts of unknown mystery right. illness. They're very sensitive. Super sensitive. Hypersensitive to, to chemical. And then you're exposing them. And they might not react immediately to these chemicals. Maybe they'll get some some eye burn, some nose burn, maybe their nose might start uh, to sizzle. To sizzle, but you know, for me, when I get exposed to chemicals, it's, you know, my eyes start to burn a little bit, my mouth gets really dry, and uh, my nose starts running. But for other people, it might be different. And this also affects the nervous system, right? So. Mm -hmm. You could be exposed to a chemical and then go throughout your day and then maybe you were exposed in the morning and in the afternoon you start having these weird panic attacks or the tingles and the numbness or a massive migraine. Migraine, I feel like that's a big one. Yeah. For I'm sure a lot of people. And so then it's like, well, what the heck? When did this happen? Did I eat something that triggered this? And then you start maybe blaming the fruit or blaming the vegetable you ate when yeah. really it's this toxic chemical that you were exposed to that's causing your symptoms. That triggered it. I found it crazy interesting that he said, you know, someone wearing cologne, if the wind's blowing a certain way, that scent could travel even a half a mile. Mm -hmm. So it's not just people within your like close vicinity, it could, you're, you know, it's blowing out into the, the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's like you need like uh, a bubble around <laughs> a bubble you. Bubble shield. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're probably thinking, why are they even allowing these products out in the world if they're so dangerous? Yeah, uh, I often wonder that myself. <laughs> but I think we know where this information is coming from that these things are okay right? Research and science is typically the ones that are telling you, no, 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 this is okay. Right. There's nothing wrong with this. Right. It's not dangerous. It's it, not going to cause cancer. It's not going to... But if you think about it, there's a lot of things that now do cause health issues and cancer and even death that back in the day was okay right yeah back like, back in the day research and science said that smoking was okay for you right and what's now, happening now it's it causes plenty of issues lung cancer copd mm -hmm. you yeah know, and then you got asbestos this is asbestos they used to put that in buildings and now they're now it's not okay yeah it's, <laughs> and it, it causes, causes lung can cancer cancer <laughs> Uh, mercury used to be something that the doctors would give you for like a thousand years, but then 
they started realizing it made people crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they still, but they still put it in our drugs. They still do. The they pharmaceutical still, industry still slips it in it's there. It's in a lot of things. So then there's the fluoroscope, and this was one I didn't know about. Was the fluoroscope is how they would s figure out if a shoe would fit on your foot. They would, it would like a shoe size, and a lot of women would go do this. Yeah, and it was like a, an x-ray for your shoe, essentially. They'd take an mm -hmm. x-ray of, like, your foot using radiation, and then they would tell you, you know, the shoe that best fits your foot. And this went on, what, in the 40s and the 50s? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then eventually they figured out, oh, crap, this is not okay. It's causing... They had to amputate plenty of women's, their legs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and because then... Because of it. Then you've got, uh, if you look at the auto automobile industry, headrests. You know, like I have an old 67 Mustang and it's got no headrests in it. And that's just how the cars were made back then. They didn't make them with headrests. Well, research and science said that we didn't need headrests, but eventually... They realized they did because people were getting whiplash. Breaking their necks. Yeah. And then there's lead that used to be in paint, and that used to be okay until it wasn't. And they realized it wasn't safe because yeah. it like was chipping off and hazardous to babies or animals that might try and eat it. Mm -hmm. So the last one here is DDT. You know, and DDT was around, I guess, with some older generations, right? Right after World War One. They started using DDT on our crops in agriculture. And they used to spray it in the parks and go down the road and spraying children like it was fun and innocent. Mm -hmm. When really they realized, oh no, this is causing health issues. It killed, it, it took out most of the bald eagles in North America. Yeah. Okay. So let's say you you go to your doctor's office and you're like, hey doctor, I notice all these weird symptoms pop up when I'm, when I'm exposed to perfumes or uh, colognes or different scents. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on here? Well, you know, the doctors, they get all their information from research and science. So, depending on who the doctor is, they might tell you that you know, those things are perfectly natural. They can't be causing these symptoms. It's got to be something else. Mm -hmm. And remember, doctors, they believe that the body just cleanses naturally. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to do anything to cleanse your body. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned is that's wrong. You actually have to do a lot of things. You yeah. Know? You yeah. have to lower the fats. You have to stay hydrated. You have to remove these troublemaker foods, and right. then your body will start to, to cleanse itself and right. start healing. So, air fresheners, scented candles, perfumes, colognes. Mm -hmm. Should we just trust research and science on this, that it's okay for our health just because they say so? I would say no. <laughs> Knowing that there's tons of synthetic chemicals in these products, so let's explain to them why plug-in air fresheners and scented candles are so bad and why plug-in air fresheners are way worse than smoking. Yeah, totally. So when you're, when you're around these chemicals, the chemicals produce this waxy, oily film. Mm -hmm. And that waxy, oily film, you're breathing it in, right? So it goes up your sinus cavity. Right through your brain affecting your your nerve cells your nervous system and from there it makes its way into the liver through the hepatic portal vein which is through the bloodstream right and then it hits up your lymphatic system which is throughout your body mm -hmm. which then dehydrates you and lowers your immune system so it's like a big shock to your entire body, making your body work really hard 
and just bog it down. Yeah, and that's that's why you get like these panic attacks or a lot of neurological issues is because your body is already bogged down, right? You're already bogged down by all the other environmental toxins, the heavy metals, the radiation, the DDT. On top of that, you're fighting pathogens. And when these pathogens are in your body, they feed off of these things. So they feed off of all of these chemicals that we're talking about. And the pathogens, you mean viruses and bacteria. Yep. And then they produce, under, uh, when they feed, right, because viruses feed, mm -hmm. they uh, eat and then they release a neurotoxin. And then that neurotoxin is another toxin that affects you neurologically. So it's like your liver's just being maxed out and kind of going crazy and doesn't know where to put these chemicals. So then they release them back in the bloodstream and it gets to the central vagus nerve and then boom, panic attack, Yeah. anxiety. So, you know, I think there are also people out there who aren't necessarily chronically ill, but also are chemical sensitive. So that probably means that they have some underlying conditions happening so that when these chemicals hit them, their body is then super sensitive to it because it's already trying to process what else is happening in their body, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're super sensitive to these chemicals. Yeah, I mean, it could, it could create other things, you know, it might not necessarily be a panic attack. It could be Just some that you get, you know, rashes on your skin. Or a, a headache, a migraine. Yeah. You know. Eczema. Yep, eczema. Yep. Or acne, that's all a symptom from from this, you know, yeah. maxing out your liver when your liver has nowhere else to put put the toxins. Exactly. Goes back in the bloodstream and then comes out through your derma, your, your, yep. your skin. Oh, and so also that uh, these chemicals we're talking about, they yep. contain toxic heavy metals in them like aluminum and copper mm -hmm. and so we're not only exposing ourselves to these toxic heavy metals but when these metals get in our bodies they oxidate they rust they create a, a toxin that pathogens love to feed off of on top of that all of this toxic heavy metals they get stored in our fat cells so now you're just giving pathogens a constant food source yeah and adding more metals to your body which you're already exposed to on a daily basis <sighs> another important thing to think about is when a woman is pregnant that that baby is being exposed to these things as well and their body is also being affected so something to really consider especially if you're pregnant or around a pregnant woman that you know, these perfumes, colognes, air fresheners, candles are not good for the baby's health. Wait, so like a woman that's pregnant might be out in public. So you're saying if a woman is pregnant and is just walking around in public and she's being exposed to perfumes and colognes by other people, that's affecting her baby? Yes. Yep. And another thing and when Anthony said this, I was like, yep, I totally know what you're saying, is he said that pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, rodenticides, all things that kill, you know, bugs off of your plants, think herbicides kill herbs, rodenticides kill rodents, those things all smell very flowery and smell a lot like perfumes and colognes. Oh, interesting. And you don't remember him saying that? I do, and it kind of makes you think, because when you buy a new t-shirt or you get something sent to you, there's always that that new store smell. Yes. That's and typically a fungicide, right? That's a fungicide. Fungicide smells very flowery, and that's something I didn't realize until, you know, we started this whole medical medium lifestyle, new you know, holistic approach to life, when I started buying new clothes, I'm like, wait a second, this smells funny, you mm -hmm. know, and I, and Anthony would tell us, oh, you know, they, they load fungicides on new clothes, especially underwear, 
I know that sounds funny that I'm telling you that, but I remember him saying a while ago that underwear is just extra loaded with that stuff. So when you buy new underwear, make sure you wash it multiple times because mm. you want to get that out because then once you put it on your body, you're exposed to it. Yeah, you're absorbing it, you're smelling it. Yeah. yeah. So new clothes, you want to wash that many, many times. And I've also noticed that certain stores smell way stronger than and others. others. Interesting. So some of you might be thinking, well, I'm totally fine around these things. You know, colognes, perfumes, candles. Like I love the smell of all of those and it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is you might be very overexposed to these items and your body has just kind of become immune to them and is okay with them and you've it's actually messed with your senses right they can't smell it as strong probably yeah I feel like you know I, I'm definitely one of the canaries you know I'm oversensitive to these things yeah. and I feel like it's kind of like I got a superpower <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like I, I could be with you and we could be walking somewhere and my symptoms kind of start up mm -hmm. and you could sit there and be like, I smelled that perfume, you know, 10 minutes ago when we walked by those people. Well, there it is. That's what's causing my symptoms. Yeah. And it's interesting. I feel like, you know, once we started cleaning up our diet and cleaning up our household and beauty products and all of that. I started to smell things a lot more. While I'm not as sensitive to them as Ben, I can definitely smell them. Mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, his body gets hit with the symptoms of them. Yeah, and the, the, what causes the sensitivity is the pathogens. We right. said that earlier. So if you have a pathogen going on, you're typically going to be that canary. You're typically going to be oversensitive. To a lot of these chemicals yeah where well, if someone doesn't have a lot of pathogens going on that doesn't mean they don't have pathogens that eventually will come out build up and and, and cause problems down the road it just right. hasn't happened yet yeah well let's talk about tips on what we can all do yeah okay about this and how to protect yourself so what's the first thing everybody can do throw it all away <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta get rid of all of these things that we just talked about you gotta get rid of the air fresheners you gotta get rid of the scented candles get rid of the colognes get rid of the perfumes i know it's hard they cost a lot of money to smell good but trust us it will be worth it yes right? yes get rid of household products that are chemical based Get rid of um, aftershaves, lotions, beauty products, shampoos and conditioners. Incense. Incense. Fabric and softeners. Fabric softeners, yep. laundry detergent. Yep. There's a lot of things. And do not, don't freak out. <laughs> when we did it, we did it slowly, right? Definitely start off by don't use your perfumes, don't use your colognes, don't use your scented candles, and don't use your air fresheners. Those, boom, get rid of those right away. See ya. Those are the worst. Mm -hmm. And then slowly you can change everything else out, right? Like your beauty products, as you run out of things, you know, get natural products that are safer. You know, your shampoo and conditioner, your body soap, your lotions, your laundry detergent. Those things you can slowly do because, it, of course, like that can be expensive to replace them right away. Yeah, but if you're if you're chronically ill, uh, it shouldn't even be a question. It should be get rid of them. Yeah, get totally. new stuff. You know, we post a lot of the stuff we use on our uh, website, so you can go on our website and we've got a list of all the products that are approved and some of the ones that we use. So. Go check that out. Yeah. Um, you guys, it'll be so good for your bodies. It'll take a big burden off of them. And even people, you know, people are even sometimes sensitive to essential oils. Yes. Yeah. Well, those are okay, essential oils, but the canaries, it might affect them. Well, some essential oils say natural, have natural, say natural uh, oil. oil 
And what we learned in this podcast is when something is says natural, it doesn't mean it is made up of natural ingredients. It just means that it contains something that's natural. Right. So watch out for that on all products. And with essential oils, make sure it's a good, reputable, reputable brand. Reputable brand. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue twist. So we know that these toxic chemicals, they dehydrate you. We also know that these toxic chemicals get stored in fat cells. Yep. So those are probably two things that we should be looking out for, right? Yes. We should stay more hydrated. More hydrated. And we should lower the fats. Lower the fats. So when we say dehydrated we don't really mean just drink a ton of water you should be drinking a ton of water ton lemon of, water ton of lemon water maybe some ginger water coconut water all good things so when we say dehydrated what we mean is eliminating a lot of these foods that dehydrate you so what are some foods that dehydrate you vinegar vinegar salt caffeine Caffeine's a big one, and I know it's tough for a lot of people to eliminate that caffeine, but we got to. It's, it's, it's lowering our immune system, dehydrating us, and causing, causing further problems. Now, uh, there's also those troublemaker foods, mm -hmm. and these are all the foods that cause trouble to the body. And... If you don't know what those are, you can go into any Anthony's books. He lists out all his troublemaker foods, and these are the foods that we want to avoid so our body can cleanse. Yep. We also want to lower the fats because when we have high fats in our system, our body is dehydrated and it can't get the hydration that it needs. You need to hydrate the cells and not dehydrate them. So by lowering your fats, you are allowing more hydration. Mm -hmm. right? and, and by lowering the fats, you're not allowing that toxic aluminum and copper to be stored in those fat cells. Exactly. Yep. So what foods hydrate us? How can we keep the hydration going? Well. Fruit. Fruit. Veggies. Wild foods. Herbs. All going to hydrate you. Yep. And we know about fruit, right? So yes. don't, don't fear, fear it. fruit. Check out our fruit fear video and Anthony's podcast on fruit fear. Yeah, so don't fear the fruit. Bring in as much fruit as you can because it hydrates the body. It has living water in it. Your body runs off of fruit, not fat. So... Yeah. Bring in all the fruit you can. Yep. And then those mineral salts. Well, where do we get the mineral salts from? We need from? the mineral salts to balance the glucose. Leafy greens. Leafy greens. <laughs> so get in the leafy greens because those will have all of your mineral salts. And those mineral salts will help get things moving in the body. Yep. Right? Start removing some of these toxins that are, are binding us down. So we know what's in these chemicals. We've got the copper and aluminum. So we need to remove that stuff from our body. Yep. And how do we do that? Well, the easiest way <laughs> is to drink the heavy metal detox smoothie. That is delicious. It has five ingredients in it that help remove metals. Mm -hmm. um, other things you can do is you can simply just eat or put it in your dishes is cilantro and parsley, right? Yeah, you can eat plantain leaf. <laughs> Which we have we, lots we of We got it. some going right here. If you don't have fresh wild plantain leaf in your backyard, you can huh. buy it as a dried herb. Red and clover blossom. Red clover blossom, yep. Wild blueberries, you can eat a ton of wild blueberries um, as well. Seaweed like dulse and spirulina. Yep, that will do it. And then dandelion. 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 Most. And, and burdock root. Burdock root burdock is a great root. one. Burdock root, yeah. And dandelion leaf, um, which a lot of grocery stores carry. Yeah, nowadays more people are getting hip with the dandelion. Or but farmer's markets, yeah. We used to 
killed the dandelion as a weed, but now we realized Not, it's medicine. Yeah. So. We, we never killed it, but a society in general. Yeah, Monsanto's commercial had some guy spraying dandelion leaves yeah. and killing them as a weed when it's really good for you. And then we talked about staying hydrated. There's another wild food that will hydrate us. And we kind of mentioned it earlier, but... Yeah, coconut. Coconut water. Yeah, and make sure it's not pink. There's a lot of trendy pink coconut waters out there, and that means it's oxidizing. Yeah, so it goes from white to pink to red. So it's slowly dying. You yep. do not want it to have that color. Because it dehydrates you if it's that color, right. and we want to hydrate ourselves. So there you go. And then you can try doing the medical medium morning cleanse yes and if you check out our video called the celery juice cleanse that is essentially the the morning cleanse so it's lowering the fats removing the radical fats removing all the troublemakers staying hydrated and incorporating celery juice in lemon water and the heavy metal smoothie and the heavy metal smoothie and you guys will be good it will you'll be set mm -hmm. <laughs> so that will that will that's how to properly cleanse the body and remove these toxic things we just talked about yep so we can't control how these chemicals get sprayed where they end up but we can control getting our life back yes and I think it's important for those who have seen this video now and listened to Medical Medium's podcast that you spread this information so less people start using these products. And the less people that start using these products, the less of a chance you might be exposed to it, yes, right? Yes, I like that. So spread the word. Okay. Spread this video. <laughs> spread the podcast. And uh, let's let's get this uh, these chemicals out of the air, huh? Sounds good. Okay. Well, thanks guys for joining us. We are gonna go now. Be sure to like this video, and if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell so you get notified every time we upload a new video. And comment below. Let us know if uh, you're one of those canaries out there. You know. I'm a canary. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm a canary. And I love canaries and they love me too. So <laughs> they do, the yellow canaries. The yellow canaries. They love yeah. me. So you know, don't be ashamed of it. Think of it as a superpower. And know that you're gonna get better, you're gonna get through this, and uh, we're here right along your side the whole way. So drop us some comments. Let us know how you connected to all this information. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you guys next time. Cool. See ya.